Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Disappearances video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's wrap up this series for this go around. Then I'll start another new series here soon. This one is not from a suggestion, but actually comes from the reddit.com website. They're from the subreddit called Unresolved Mysteries, which is a fascinating subreddit. If you ever want to go into a wormhole that'll stretch hours on end, Click on any of these posts here and then you'll be able to see all the information associated with them. The reason why I pick this entry is because it doesn't necessarily have to do with a disappearance per se. There was a body found, but it has to do more with the mystery as to who the murderer was and then also why they did it. In fact, that's why it's alluded to here on the title. But even to this day, 30 plus years later, it still remains as baffling as when it first occurred. So in this case, it has to do with the murder of Richard Dick Hansen killed because of a license plate. So let's go ahead and let's feature the information here. I'll give my own thoughts and opinions. I'm just going to read the information as is because it plays out so well. You'll hear everything needed and then I'll give my own thoughts and comments on it afterwards. So here's what it says. Richard Hansen, better known as Dick, was born on February 23rd, 1955 in San Jose, California. Born into a prominent Santa Clara County family, Dick spent his entire life in that area, attending Santa Clara University where he played football. Dick had been married, but he and his wife had divorced several years previously. He had two daughters, aged 13 and 11, in 1991. On the eve of April 29, 1991, Dick went out with a friend who has only been referred to as Gene. Dick's case had been featured on Unsolved Mysteries and, more recently, Dates from Hell. While the Dates from Hell episode presented the evening like it was just Dick and Gene, Unsolved Mysteries presented the situation as though they were out with more friends. Either way, dinner was had at Original Joe's Restaurant, and it seems they also went to a club afterward. At around 1 a.m., although one source says 1.30 a.m., Gene drove Dick back over to his car, which had been left at Original Joe's. Dick and Gene spent some time talking in Gene's car when Gene noticed the car pull up behind them. Gene took note of the car because the street had all but been deserted before. Gene did make mention of the fact that since there was a mailbox there, maybe Gene and Dick should pull up to give the guy some room. Dick said the guy had plenty of room, and because Gene didn't know the area very well, Dick agreed to let her follow him in her car. And so when they pulled out of the street in their separate cars, the man behind them also pulled out. When they made a left turn at a traffic light, so did the man. And so once they pulled onto Interstate 280, the man was still following them. This is when Gene knew that this man was following them completely. When the pair then pulled onto I-85, so did the man. Gene even tried switching lanes several times, but the man was still on both of their car's tail. At one point, Gene tried yelling to Dick that they should go to the police, but he couldn't hear her because of the road noise. He did yell back that they should pull off over to the next exit. And so they, Dick stopped his car on a residential street. Jim pulled in behind. Then things got really tense. Dick got out of his car, asked Jean if she knew who this guy was, and she said no. And so he walked up to the man's car and then said something to the effect of, what do you want? The man then said something that Jean couldn't hear and then pointed towards her car. But Dick Dick got so angry and responded with something along the lines of, get the hell out of here. This is when the man pulled out a gun and shot Dick point blank in the chest. Jean wanted to duck into her car to hide, but she was frozen in fear. But the man just drove off. It's unclear if Jean went off to go call the police or if a passing car Cautiously called, but Dick was dead by the time the paramedics arrived. There seemed to be very little motive in Dick's case. All that they had was Jean's eyewitness testament and her license plate, which read 49er Hugs. 
This was in reference to the San Francisco 49er football team. She was a fan of the team, and since Dick still had the physique of a football player, maybe the killer was a fan of a rival team. Also, according to the Dates from Hell episode, Dick was even recognized as a football player while he and Jean were at dinner. Now, the man who killed Dick was described as a white man with a dark olive complexion. He may be Hispanic or Mediterranean at the time of the killing. He was in his late 30s, early 40s, and at the time he was wearing large glasses with thick black frames. The car this man was driving appeared to be a 1970s Pontiac GTO Le Mans with either a dull gray or blue paint job. It was a two-door coupe. There is little other information in Dick's case. Jean's real name has never been revealed in order to keep her safe, and Dick's parents have since passed away. This seems to be a memorable Unsolved Mysteries case, though. Then that's it. That's everything from that post there on that reddit.com website, the subreddit Unresolved Mysteries. So let's talk about that here. So as you can see, this happened back in 1991, April 29th. So over 30 plus years, and to this day, there's still no answer. But it is really, really baffling because of so little information associated with that murderer. So apparently, Dick, who was someone that lived in an area, played football, had the physique of the football, and as the last part said that he was almost recognized as a football player, was out and about with someone, a friend, who is colloquial known as Jean, that apparently is not her real name, but may have been just used for anonymity purposes. But yeah, they were out and about, they went out to dinner at a place called Original Joe's, then they went to a club afterwards, they left uh, his car there. Uh, while they went to the club, and then after that, they came back, and then that's when this happened. Somebody pulled up behind them in that car, and this was apparently, again, 1970s Pontiac GTO Le Mans, and then just started following them. They The two cars, in this case, both Dick and Gene's cars, went out into the highway. This car was still following them. They switched lanes. It still followed them. They went out into some area, a residential street. It still followed them. And then at that point, they parked. And then Dick was asking Jean if they knew him. And she said no. And so he walked over and then asking or something like along the lines of, what do you want? They got into a little mini argument, him telling to get the hell out of there. And then that's when he was shot point blank. But this was before uh, or after the man essentially pointed over to her car. So this was definitely tied to something related to her. The first impression I got just seeing this um, when I was reading this information was that he knew her in some way, like it was some kind of jealous ex-boyfriend or some kind of other ex-spouse, something along those lines, or maybe even a stalker of some sort. But the fact that the investigation was done by the police, and I'm sure they questioned her, and I'm pretty sure that they found out who else she could have been uh, familiar with in her life, and seeing if that matched the description associated with the killer, like in other words, what, what he looked like, and then eyewitness testaments. The fact that none of it has been linked to her tells me that, no, it was truly a stranger. And the fact that apparently he was pointing towards the car, the only other thing that could tie in is the license plate. The idea that she had this very unique license plate that said 49er hugs. So again, it ties into the title and then what the post was saying was Richard Dick Hansen killed because of her license plate? Was this some kind of fanatic fan, somebody that was so obsessed against the 49ers that he just randomly decided right then and there to follow both of them because of his grudge, whatever he had associated with that team? As far-fetched as that sounds, that's unfortunately the only thing that this case has. There's nothing else really linked to it. Even after 30 years and descriptions and then multiple shows, including Unsolved Mysteries, nobody has come forth with more information as to who it was. And apparently, if there were witnesses around, who knows how far away or close by, none of them have mentioned anything else afterward. Really, the only witness is Jean herself, but um, in any case, nothing else has come forward. So the poor parents have since passed away, for, uh, in other words, Dick's parents, but they never knew the answer as to who the killer was, and presuming that he's in his 30s and 40s at the time of the incident itself, and this being 30 plus years later, he may still be alive, 
or he may have passed away already. And if so, there's going to be no linkage to him at all afterwards. But that's pretty much it. Baffling case, isn't it? Woo! In terms of this mysteries and disappearances, again, there's no disappearance per se, although you could consider the murderer having disappeared. But still, it's more baffling in terms of the mystery. Why it happened and who did it. And maybe someday there's going to be some resolution associated with it too. But let me know what you guys and gals think. Those of you that are in the area... If you happen to be around that time and this was a, a sensational case, you have more information on it, post it below. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.